The Bible says there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother, and his name is Jesus. Jesus' arms are the best place to be when you are experiencing a fall. It's not in the bar getting drunk. The best place to be when you are experiencing divorce, rejection, and addiction is the church. Because if ever you are going to get out of the pit, then you need to hear about Jesus. When you have lost your job, run to Jesus and say, though I am down, he's going to help and get up. There is a brotherhood, a sisterhood that happens in the body of Christ. And if two of you shall agree and as touching, the devil cannot isolate you and you won't feel guilt. And condemnation again if two of you shall agree and touch the devil now cannot isolate any of you and you won't feel guilt and condemnation friends the body of Christ has been born for adversity this is where you need to run into when troubles break into your life though you may be down but not out when you hit the rock bottom, it seems like there is nowhere to go out, but you can come to church. A friend will leave you to fall. There is a major difference between falling and failure. You have to understand that the just man falls seven times a day, but he burns back in God and rises again. God has put something inside of you that when you hit the dead bottom, you can stay there for so long because you have Jesus on the inside. God will not let you stay in the dead and talk about how bad your fall was, but God will show you how to get out. Though nothing in the natural matches up, that is what faith is. It is only in future when you don't bounce. The bounce is what converts the fall into victory. Anytime the Lord allows you to fall, he intends for you to bounce. In Luke chapter 10 verse 13, the Bible says, And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. That is a pretty good description of the fall. But the Lord sent a good Samaritan to take care of him, to get up. The recovery is also built into the fall. There is a way out, my brother, my sister. Anytime there is temptation, it makes a way of escape. You need to understand that God has a plan to even use the fall to your advantage. People say the higher they are, the bigger they fall. But in Bounds analogy, it goes like this. The harder you fall, the higher you bounce. If something is, if something in life could let you down easy, i.e., life has grabbed you and say, I am throwing you down. The harder you fall, the higher you bounce. My enemies listen. Though I fall, I shall rise. And with the same intensity and attack, I went down. God will elevate me and the bounce will come. The higher you fall, the higher you bounce. The second component of the bounce is the impact. The impact is when you hit bottom. It is when contact is dismayed with something. After the fall comes the impact. You got to survive the impact if you are going to make it to the recovery. 
It is in the input time that Satan whispers give up. In the impact, you'll be out of shape. The impact bends you out of shape. You have to absorb the impact or you will explode with the impact. A lot of people don't understand that God has put something in you that enables you to absorb the hits in the impact. We find that Brothers and sisters, we find what you are made of when the impact hits you. When the divorce is at its lowest ebb, it's that moment that you cannot give up. The third component of the bounds is restoration. If you can survive the impact without exploding, without being permanently cut off, or out of shape, permanently refusing to forgive. If you can survive that initial impact, there will come a time the spirit of restoration will push it back with its pressure. The enemy wants you to fall in the impact to cause you to fall in your identity. But the great seeds on the inside of you will overcome the outside force and you get back to your original identity. You are not your circumstances. At this time, I want you to prophesy to your life that you are not your circumstances. Your true identity is not defined in the house you live in or the car you have just acquired or the car you have just had been repossessed or some terrible thing that had just happened to you but you are who God says you are and God knows how to restore your identity there is a time the impact loses its steam all because the one on the inside is greater than the one on the outside. Though you went through hell and it seems you are out of shape, the spirit of restoration begins to push back. Then you will take your original shape and identify as the spirit of God restores your soul, as your soul, as Isaiah chapter 51, verse 12 encourages us. There is restoration from the inside. Something has impacted and has caused you to be out of shape. But faith is going to cause you to receive restoration. Once it begins to restore our true identity, there is elevation. You begin to rise again. There's lifting because that which was against you, God, again, my brother, my sister, God, can take and cause it to work for you. The reason it causes elevation is because something threw it down. That is exactly what happens to Joseph. When his brothers took him and threw him down into the pit, and Potiphar, wife, and then Potiphar's wife, who threw him into the prison. Again, this is what I'm saying. That this is exactly what happened to Joseph. When his brothers took him and threw him down into the pit. Then comes Potiphar's wife, who also threw him into the prison. And finally, he hit the bottom of life and went as lowest as he can go and rose to become the prime minister. You see, though Joseph started out as a dreamer, but in the prison, he started getting his identity back because the Bible says he had dreamt again in the prison 20 years later. And he had a dream about Pharaoh and he what? He fed hungry people. Oh my God. You see, he started taking his true identity because the same force that was reckoned against him now 
Reckon against now, the bounds begin, and there was elevation. So the harder you fall, the higher you bounce. Again, the harder you fall, the higher you bounce. You see, the harder the falls that trust you down, the higher the elevation. Now, when the elevation from the Lord comes, my brother, my sister, no one can hold you down. You see, with the same intensity that you were thrown down, God intends to elevate you up. You see, they took Jesus, they laid him in the tomb. That was the fall. He was impacted with nails in his hands, his feet, side, and legs. And when they put the body, his body, in the tomb, he went down into hell and snatched the keys of death and hell in the grave and let those in bondage out on the third day. There was an empty tomb. He's not there. He's alive. He's alive. He's risen. He got his true identity on the third day. There was the restoration on the third day when he grabbed the keys from the devil saying, Grave, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Rejoice not over me, my enemies. Though I fall, I shall rise again. Beloved, that is elevation. That is elevation. Oh, glory be to God. It didn't stop. He goes up on the mount and a cloud elevator takes him up. That is a cloud elevator. We have different kinds of elevators in our buildings. Yes, but this is a cloud elevator. I prophesy that God will release a cloud elevator into your life. And that God will take you deeper into his presence. As the Apostle Paul experienced. That I know of a man who went to the third heavens and saw mysteries that can not be uttered to the ordinary man. Beloved, as he's going up, he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. He went higher and higher until he seated at the right hand of God, giving the name that is above every name. But there will come a day when you and I well, or every one of us within a hundred years would take a fall. Death will knock at your door and my door. And we will be laid in the coffin. But there will come a day when the elevation will come for you. When the trumpet sound, I'm going to get up out of the ground. Oh, the older you get. You will not fear death because you have elevation and you'll be with the Lord. If you are going down, you are going up. Therefore, we are more than conquerors to Christ. My brother, my sister, this is the time to understand that no condition is permanent. Always, always realize that when you go down, it's a condition for you to be elevated on the higher realms of life. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Bye.